So I'm Lisa Purdue, product manager at Arulia for our GNSS simulation product line. And today we're going to look take a look at the GSG-8, our advanced GNSS simulator. So we're going to go over what the GSG-8 is, go over how hardware in the loop works in the GSG-8, and then we'll look at a live demonstration of that system. So you can go on the next slide. So first, I want to give an introduction to our SkyDell software. So our SkyDell software defined simulator really is our simulator. So we run that on different hardware platforms. One of those hardware platforms is the GSG-8. So the GSG-8 is the hardware platform. The SkyDell engine is the software that's running on there. So whether you're running SkyDell on your own hardware on a GSG-8, it's the same interface and same software. So that's what would be the focus of today. So looking at approaches to GNSS simulation, the traditional approach has always been to use fixed allocated hardware for GNSS simulation. Um, this is what you'll find in the market today. Um, almost every simulator out there is using this fixed allocated hardware. That means that they're designing hardware specifically for doing GNSS simulation. Um, they're typically using FPGAs to generate the uh, modulated data. So the I and Q data stream is done in FPGA. That usually limits us to the number of channels that we can have or the number of signals that we can simulate. So you'll see simulators say, OK, we can do 12. We can do 300. In any case, those are fixed hardware channels and that number can't really change. It can't be um, increased without significant hardware additions. So it's difficult to really scale that to big larger systems. And that also means that you have a large R&D team working. Part of that R&D team is working on developing hardware all the time. And if you have to make a change to the hardware, it's a whole re rework and redo of the design. Um, instead, what we've done is taken, you know, in the last 10 years, software defined radios have become very, very good. So maybe 10 years ago, we might, this approach wouldn't have been uh, viable for GNSS simulation because the software defined radios in the market may not have been good enough, but today they are. We can get very, very good accuracy and signal integrity with the software defined radio. So it gives us the ability to use that plus a GPU, like what you would use for gaming. So those have also become very, very powerful over the last 10 years. And now we can use that to do our signal processing instead of an FPGA. So what it allows us to do is have maximum scalability and flexibility. We can really focus all of our efforts on developing the software and we're just going to use commercial off the shelf hardware. So we're not actually limited by the hardware design. If we want to expand, if we have an idea to do something bigger, better, we can just see what's available in the market and use different hardware without having, to, you know, we have to validate that hardware, but we don't have to design it. Well, we're not limited by fixed hardware channels, so we can generate hundreds of signals within the GPU and how many signals you can generate is going to be dependent on um, the bandwidth of the signals that are selected and I'll show you that in the GUI and we'll be able to continue to generate just you know as many signals as we need. We do all in view simulation because we're not limited by a small number of channels. So we can keep, continue to take advantage of those innovations and designs of software defined radios and GPUs. Every year when they come out with a new line of uh, NVIDIA GPUs, we can just use those and we're and now our system is that much more powerful. We don't have to design new hardware to increase the capability and powers of our systems. So you can go on the next slide. So that brings us to the SkyDell simulation engine. So that's what you see a picture of here on the screen. And again, SkyDell, the engine is what powers our GSG-8 and any other um, SkyDell based simulation products that we have. So we're going to look at some of the key benefits here, and that's our easy configuration with the UI and automation, and I'll show you that in the demo. We support all the constellations and frequency bands for GNSS signals. We provide a comprehensive API in Python, C Sharp, C++, and LabVIEW. And I'll show you that as well, because it really is a nice feature of the system. And 
the fact that we provide not only the interface to the simulator, we provide a lot of examples and we provide that whole client side um, simulation as well. And I will show you that too. So it makes it very easy to get going and running a simulation, whether you're using the API or whether you're using the GUI. So we can do you know, a lot of the advanced uh, signal customization and scenario creation. That means that we can edit just about any parameter of any GNSS signal. So it's really up to your imagination on what, how you want to do it, how you want to design your tests. Your test development and design is not limited by the software tool that you have. That's our goal at Arolia is to make sure that whatever tests you intend to implement, you're not limited to by the simulation hardware software that you're using. So we can do a lot of that modification of variables in real time. Um, the interference generation is integrated into the system, so you don't have to use another set of hardware or another box. It's, you don't have to have dedicated hardware for that either. You can have it all as part of um, one hardware set that's generating GNSS signals and interference signals. Um, another unique thing is that we can do IQ file generation and playback. So we'll be able to actually save IQ data as a file and then we can play that back as well. We can play that back as an interferer and in coming from a specific transmitter at a ground point. Um, all of our simulations for SkyDell based products are done at a thousand hertz sim simulation interrupt iteration rate. Sorry, so our thousand hertz update rate. You might hear that called. And of course, we can record and export user interactions as Python scripts, and I can show you that as well. So there's a lot of capability here in the SkyDell simulation engine that we bring into the GSG8 when we run the uh, SkyDell simulation on our GSG8 hardware platforms. Okay, you can go on the next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, you can, for the SkyDell simulation, you can purchase a turnkey system from us, and that's the GSG8. Um, we also have some value added resellers that would be able to provide their hardware platforms to you, but it's running the same SkyDell software, or we can also provide you just the software and you can provide, you can generate uh, your own hardware setup. So you can provide a PC with a GPU and a software defined radio. And of course we would give you the guidance on what's um, available, which are supported software defined radios and what kind of performance you can expect out of different GPUs. So you can make a decision on which setup that you want to use. So that's something that gives us that flexibility. So if you need something smaller than a GSG-8, you can actually put that together yourself. And our system, it, our software will just run on that. Okay, next slide. So this is where we'll introduce the, um, the GSG-8 itself. So again, it's running the SkyDell software. The hardware platform itself is going to have the option of one to four RF outputs. So you can actually simulate multiple vehicles. You can have like four simulators in one if you want. We have um, advanced jamming and spoofing options. We can do all kinds of receiver trajectories. We have a wide dynamic range because we're using these software defined radios. We actually uh, attenuate external to the box, meaning that we can have very high power signals when we need them. So for jamming or for um, go in an anechoic chamber, something like that. We can take advantage of the high power level of software defined radios and we can actually go up to a zero dBm transmit power. And we'll always generate all in view simulation with SkyDell and GSG8 products. If you want to limit the number of signals or satellites based on some specification, that's possible as well. Otherwise, we'll always default to showing you all, all in view. So you, again, we're not limited by a fixed hardware set of channels. So this is what we'll, we'll show you hardware in the loop and we'll talk a bit about that. And, but we can also remember that we can use it in a lab bench environment for any kind of GNSS testing. You can test your system performance. We can do vulnerability testing. Uh, because of that thousand Hertz simulation iteration rate, we can do very high dynamics and aerospace simulations as well. So we have no problem doing any kind of simulation that you can think of when related to GNSS.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. I like it. It saves me a minute of talking and I can take a drink, so it's all good. Now we move on to hardware in the loop. So I'm going to have a couple slides here before we roll into the demo, but I just want to introduce the concept real quick and just tell you how it works in the Skydell GSG-8 simulators. So next slide. So this is the uh, GSG-8 hardware in the loop setup. So we have our, uh, what I have shown here is this Lego computer, but that's really where your all your mathematical computations are being done, all your models, and then what you'll send over to the GSG-8 is like the position, speed, velocity, information, acceleration, whatever it is that you have, whatever format you have, um, you send that over to the GSG-8. So all the work is really being done in that external trajectory processing unit. So that, that unit could be a um, simulator, you know, like a vehicle driving simulator. It could be a flight simulator. So we've done a lot of integrations with flight simulators because as you can imagine, if you're sitting in the cockpit of a flight simulator, you you want all the instrumentation to update, including the GPS information for whatever you're doing, but you can't predict it ahead of time what it's going to be because someone's actually flying the plane. So you need to have that input in real time so the instrumentation updates in real time to give the pilot that feedback to whatever it is that they're doing. So that's why um, a flight simulator is a really good example of what that mathematical computation engine would be, right? So all that be done inside the flight simulator and we'll just send us over the position information over into the GSG-8 and we'll generate the GNSS constellation and the RF based on that input. So it's important that that whatever that trajectory generation device is is synchronized in time. So we usually use 10 megahertz 1 PPS type signals um, to synchronize that in the GSG-8 because we're sending over things with timestamps, which is how we work in Skydell. We need to make sure that they're on the same time base and the time's moving at the same rate for both. And then we send the RF signals to the receiver. And then on the receiver side, we can actually take that feedback into the GSG-8. So in real time, you can have information about how the system is performing as well. You can see the, the position error, what satellites are being tracked. And we'll look at that in the demo as well. Let's go ahead, Sophie. So looking at how hail commands work in the GSG-8 and Skydell, you have some type of script that's taking the information from your trajectory generation source. Again, that could be like flight simulator, um, turning it into commands. It's, and that's very simple for the um, for Skydell to understand. So we'll send both information of timestamp and positional information that could also, like I said, be speed acceleration. But we'll send timestamp in position. We'll send it over um, TCP IP connection, whether that's on the same uh, device or whether it's off the device. And I'll show you on the device. It doesn't matter. It's still the same interface into Skydell. And Skydell will store those commands in a buffer. So you can actually send the commands in advance of when you want them to be executed. And then we'll execute them exactly at the right time. Um, between where it is stored in the buffer when it's time to go until we actually see it come out in the RF, we have a 50 millisecond delay. And that's a fixed 50 milliseconds. So it's completely deterministic and we know what that delay is going to be so we can compensate for it in, the, in our systems. You can go on the next one. This is just some key benefits to the way that uh, Skydell does the hardware in the loop approach. Um, or hard, hardware in the loop simulation. So traditionally, we see in simulators that the injected data is not timestamped. That means that if you want it to be accurate and everything happening at the proper times, you need to send the data at exactly the right time. Um, because you're going over a network connection, a lot of times that, that for this traditional approach is a UDP connection and you're just sending data over there, you can have inconsistent data rates that are gonna lead to high jitter on your trajectory. Um, you can have loss of packets, so what the simulator doesn't know what to do. So you'll have to have more extrapolation, so there's a higher lot, a higher chance of packet loss there. And a lot of times there's no client side provided, so you have to ha take a book of commands given by the manufacturer and implement your own. And while it might not be that hard to implement the commands in a piece of code, you're still going to struggle 
it, there's a lot of work to do to minimize the jitter and you know compensate for any lost packets. So there's there's a lot of data or a lot of things that go into hardware in the loop for the traditional approach. So we tried to simplify that with the SkyDoll approach where we're going to take precisely timestamped data on as our input. So we don't have to be tightly synchronized because we already know exactly what time we're going to need to implement that because there's a timestamp there. Due to having those precise timestamps, we have no jitter. Um, the latency is perfectly deterministic, so we know exactly what it is and we can compensate for it. So it's not, you know, 48 this time and 52 milliseconds next time. It's 50 and we can compensate for that. And we also provide the client side API. So we provide that in um, Python, C++, C Sharp, and LabVIEW. And we have examples for the common tasks. So we try to make it a lot easier, easier and simpler to implement with the SkyDell approach. Can go on the next slide. And now I, this is where I'm going to switch over and I'm going to share my screen in order to take a look at the actual GSG-8 interface and do a little bit of demo for hardware in the loop. So you should be able to now see my screen. So what I have open here is the SkyDell software running on the GSG-8. So when we first open the, the unit, we have the GSG-8 here. I start the SkyDell software and it will open up. And here I've already assigned all of our RF outputs to be um, different signal types. So I'm going to do basically everything we can do um, other than the regional system. So we have some GPS, we have uh, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, we have uh, multi-frequency, so we have the GPS multi-frequency signals, Galileo multi-frequency signals, and GLONASS and Beidou G2, B2 multi-frequency signals as well. So we're going to use all of these signals, and as I said earlier, I don't really have to be too concerned about how many of each one there are because we're not work operating on channels. So I don't have to select, okay, I want to have four of GPS, four of Beidou, something like that. I can just know that there's I'm gonna generate all in view satellites and we'll see that when we get started. So in the, the interface itself, we have some capabilities to do automation. So if I go on the automate tab, we can see that I can go in here and this is what I had been doing earlier to make sure that everything was working, but we can see every command that I did in the system. So I stopped the last one, I cleared the log, I set the GPU output, all of the all of those commands are listed here. So I can just double click on one and I can get the, inter the information about it. I also can see what the documentation is. So I have a JSON object. I can see what all the variables that are possible and what they mean. So it makes it a lot easier than using a manual to have to find these things. You can just do, the, do it in the GUI and then come and see what it is, what the command is. We can also take this list of commands and export them to Python. And it will make a fully functional Python script for you to rerun that, modify that, to do whatever you want. So it makes the um, integration part via the API a lot simpler when you use this automate tab. So you don't have to look up, how do I do this? You just do it in the GUI and you can see what it is right here. So if I go back to settings and then let's take a look at some of the stuff that comes with the SkyDell um, simulation engine when you when it's installed on a system. And this is whether, again, it doesn't matter if it's a GSG-8 or um, another hardware platform. So when I look at the files, I can see if I go to the API folder that I have APIs here for C++, C Sharp, and Python. In Oops, I'm sorry. In here, we also have LabVIEW Remote API. Well, I'm going to work in Python because it's easier for us to, to do on the fly here when we're, we're short on time for a demo. So we'll go into Python folder and you can see now everything that's provided with the simulation, with the simulator. So we have examples on how to do basic things, just make the connection, how to do start and stop, how to create routes how to do hardware in the loop. So we'll use an example hill script today. I'm going to use the example hill CSV. So we're going to give you examples for all of those things. And then we also give you the client side API. So this is already all built for you. So all the interactions with SkyDell from your program to SkyDell, 
all of that library is already built and you can use that and you can use these to call and do whatever you want so you don't have to write your own interface program that's already there you just have to tell us what it is you want to do on the simulator you have to do those commands but the rest of it is already there for you so it makes it really like i said easy and that it really lessens the learning curve needed to get started doing hardware in the loop or any kind of automation via the API. So what I'm gonna do now, because I don't have my own flight simulator, although that would be really fun, I haven't gotten that uh, set up and working at home. So what I'm gonna do is use a trajectory that's in a file and I'm gonna send it over the API. So this, this file is my trajectory source for now, but I'm not gonna just open it in, in the SkyDell and let it run. I'm gonna send it over the API. So we'll see that in a minute. Um, but we all we're doing is sending the time. So this is in milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, I'm gonna send another command. And I, this could be up to every one millisecond. So a thousand Hertz, we can send this data in. But in this case, the file that I have is at 10 Hertz. So I have latitude, longitude, altitude, and that's all the information I really need in order to get the simulation going. If I look at the script itself that I'm going to run, um, this is the Python script. This is the example that came with the Skydell simulator. So I didn't have to write any of this. I already came with that. All I had to do is tell it which file I wanted to use the CSV file. And of course, this was the example hill with CSV. So if it was example hill from something else, then it would interface with something else. But here I'm just using a file. So I just had to do the file path. Um, there is code in here to create a new configuration and set up all the signals and everything. But I had already done that through the GUI. So I just comment those out. So I, that's not going to affect anything that I've already done. Uh, and then the rest of this is already set up, so it's going to set the vehicle trajectory to hill. It's going to start the simulation. It's going to start reading from that CSV file and pushing those positions over to the simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now so that we can see what that looks like. So you can see over here that all these positions are being pushed to the simulator. Again, doesn't matter how many are pushed at each time because um, they're time stamped, so they'll be implemented appropriately. And in the GUI, now when I'm running it, I have this little robot guy telling me that the um, data that's controlling the simulation is coming in from another application, which is exactly what's happening. So I know that that's working. I can take a look at the receiver, so I can connect a receiver. Although I don't think, oh, it's just starting to get a, a position fix now on the receiver. So we can actually see information about what the receiver is doing, what its position is, altitude, whatnot. I can look on the map where I'll see both the receiver and the simulator. So here in the simulation, it was a flight where we took off here from the airport, and now we're just going to do a little loop come back around so it's a very simple flight but we'll be able to see both the receiver and the simulator on the map so you can always see what's going on between them we have on the bottom a deviation tab so we can see the position error between the receiver and the simulator so even though we had just gotten started with the simulation the position error is still very very low, we have low error, which means the simulation is very accurate. It will become actually more accurate when it runs a little longer and gets more data from the almanac, but it looks good for now. And now we can see it's growing a little bit when we're making a turn, but still we're within about a meter here. Um, on the spectrums tab, I can look at the spectrum. So when I assigned all those signals to the radios, uh, there was multiple different signal types. So here we can actually visualize what those look at like. If I wanted to zoom in and look at just one of them because I want more information about that, I could turn off the others so I can have a better view of what so that the signals look like. So you can see where the noise floor is. You can see where the different signal types are, what their shape looks like. It can give you some interesting insight into how GNSS works and where the jamming signals have most effect 
on GNSS, things like that. So it's, it's nice to see exactly what it is that we're generating or simulating. On the constellations tab, you can see these are all the satellites I'm, I'm simulating. Um, I don't know, I didn't do a count on how many satellites and how many signals, but there's, there's a lot going on there. So you can see all of them. We can see them all independently. So I can say, okay, these are all the GPS satellites. These are all the GLONASS, all the Galileo, Beido, SBAS. So we can really just look into whatever we want. I can show the receiver so I can get real time feedback from the receiver to see what its signals are, what signals that the receiver sees in this case. I can adjust things in real time. So I can say, okay, I want to bring the power level down a little bit. And I can see that reflected in the receiver right away. I think my trajectory is about to run out here in a second, but I think this should give you a good overview and idea of how the simulator works, how the interface looks, and what we can do as far as hardware in the loop. So again, I had to use a CSV uh, file as my trajectory, but that trajectory could be any type of, you know, it could even be something that is done in MATLAB where all the computations and everything are all calculated there and then sent over. So it doesn't have to be something big like a flight simulator. So it, there's a lot of different area that we can do. So this stopped because my trajectory is over. But hopefully that gives everyone a good view into the GSG-8 and definitely available to do personalized demos for you. So we can actually take a deeper look in the areas that you're interested in. So just let us know if you want to arrange that. I'm always happy to do that or even just talk about it so we can get on a call and discuss it as well. So I think, Sophie, I'm done with that. If you want to take back over and wrap up. Yep. Um, are there any plan to design your own specialized hardware platform to handle the SCIDA software similar to already supported ETOS D deck tech boards? Um, ah, so to design our own software defined radio, I think is the is the question. And it is something that we're looking into. So we are looking at, you know, as as always in product development company, we're always looking forward to what's next. And so that's something that we're doing an evaluation of now. So that's part of our summer work is taking a look at what's available in the market right now. If we want to make any improvements um, to what we're currently using, work with those vendors. And then as another possibility, it might be possible for us to make our own software defined radio if we don't find exactly what we're looking for. So it's possible, but it's not, uh, it's not definite yet. Sounds like a nice summer to come. <laughs> OK, so I think we can wrap it up. Um, just for people who attended this, thank you for coming. Um, just don't forget there are some, we have some webinar left. Uh, tomorrow we will have Edward Bertolini presenting us a live demo of the VersaSync, following up by Alain Boué, whom will make a topic on the return link system. And we will finally wrap up this session, the webinar series with uh, John Fisher to introduce us to the new mini Rubidium oscillator, the SpectraTime MRO50 that we released a few days ago. And obviously don't forget to visit our virtual booth, which is now live on the Orlea website. Uh, as you know, we obviously have a main focus on commercial aviation, but we also have combat search and rescue beacon for military needs. Uh, we also have now an innovation corner showing up uh, so what Lisa introduced you today, uh, some testing and simulation item as well as timing and synchronization solution. So don't hesitate to visit, request for a demo, request for a meeting, or register for the rest of the webinars to come. And I wrap it up. Thank you all for coming and have a nice day.